as a believer, understanding godliness, you must live each day of your life with this wisdom of godliness, which is first, contentment. Godliness requires contentment. First Timothy 6, 6. Godliness requires contentment. If you must be godly. So godliness is living like God. That's the meaning of godliness. Living, behaving, thinking like God. That's what godliness means. So he said, now, godliness with contentment is great gain. Can we say it once again? Let it go. Now, godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we will carry nothing out of it. He said, and having food and clothing with this, we shall be content. You have food in your house, you have clothes over here. He said, with this, we shall be content. I told you the theory structure we are talking about is priority, principle, choice. I know many of us have prioritized gold, silver, and whatsoever riches the world have to offer more than ourselves. So it's teaching you that godliness and contentment is what? Say, so for you came into this world with what? Did he say you came with one shoe? Did he say you came with bag? You came with wristwatch? No, you came with Rolls Royce. You came with Yuma Jeep. You came with building. Everything you are acquiring here, yeah, you will leave it. You know, yeah, I, just hear what I'm saying. Because the Bible says a man's life is not consist of the abundance of things he possesses. That's not what your life is consist about. So if you finish acquiring, you will still die and leave everything. That's what he's trying to tell you there. Everything. There's nothing you will carry along. I mean nothing. Not even a, a penny. You brought nothing into this world. Nothing is your own. You know when you move into a furnished apartment? Furnished apartment is apartment that is already furnished. Everything is there. You just move in. This world is a furnished home. You brought nothing in. Whatsoever you are enjoying here, you will not take it along with you. So when you are living in a furnished house or in a hotel, you don't claim the TV is mine, the tower is mine, the bed. Nothing is yours there. You came into the hotel with nothing. You will leave when you are lodging out with what? Very good. So this earth is a lodge. It's a guest house. It's a hotel. It's a furnished apartment. So godliness with contentment is what? Is what? Great is what? Great so now for that, God did not want you to relax. Because when you are so content, you give birth to complacency. And complacency brings familiarity. Wisdom there. Then he tell you... To hunger and taste. He didn't leave you there to say, okay, be content. Just remain like this. Then the hunger and taste for me. Hunger and taste. The Bible said in the book of Luke 11, from verse 9, you must hunger and taste. Jesus said, blessed are they who hunger and taste for righteousness. You always yearn for more. He said, so I say to you, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. That means ask for more. Be content, but first, see, the foundation is contentment. You build, you are acting on that with contentment, not in greed. Are you hearing me? When you don't ask in contentment, you ask amiss. So the foundation, before you start asking, be content first. Godliness and contentment, then you learn, you move into asking. Now, if you don't tame your asking, you keep on asking, asking, asking. If you don't tame it, you become greedy. So the next one is say, be thankful. Be what? Colossians 3 15. He said, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Tell your neighbor, be thankful. Be thankful. Tell your neighbor again. Be thankful. Say, don't be greedy. Don't be, greedy. Be, thankful. be thankful. In the book of Psalm 100, from verse 4, enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Be what? Be thankful. You see, some people don't know that thanksgiving is what brings multiplication and increase. And it takes contentment to be thankful. If you are not content, you can never be thankful. Say, is it this one you gave me? Some people, you give them something. For them to say, thank you. Thank you. You don't deserve anything you receive because you came into this world with nothing. Is it? That shows you, there's nothing that belongs to you today that you deserve. So questioning God or asking the Father, any question is evil. You came with nothing. You don't even know how you started existing. So that you have life, you have food, you have health, you have clothes. You ought to be thankful. The thanksgiving brings multiplication. Anything you thank God about multiplies. Anything you are grateful about increases. Are you hearing me? The Bible said in the book of John 6, from verse 12, when Jesus came to the point of scarcity. Let's start from verse 6. This was when there was 
5,000 men with only five loaves of bread. But this is said to test them, for himself knew what to do. So Philip answered him, 200 dinary worth of bread is not sufficient enough that every one of them may have little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five belly loaves and two pots. What are they among so many? When you look at what you have now, you say, What do I have now compared to my need? That's the meaning of this. The truth is, your need is more than what you have. Are you hearing me? Your needs, what you need to do with money, finance, or anything, is more than what you already have. But there's a secret to multiply it. So he said, what are these among these thousands of responsibilities? Then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there were much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number of about 5,000. Mm -hmm. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given, Thanks. given, Thanks. given, Thanks. because the Lord is saying he wants to multiply you this season, so in one minute, raise up your voice to the Lord and begin to give him thanks. Look around your life and look for something you should give him thanks for. That thing you need him to do, give him thanks for it. Open your mouth and pray. Raise up your voice, let him hear you. Give thanks with understanding. Our fire has brought you. Give him thanks, give him thanks. Father, thank you.